Hey guys, this is Naeem, and you've reached the Mosaic Church Podcast. So excited that you're part of our listening community, and I'd love for you to be even more connected. So check out our website. There's more content there, and there's more opportunities for you to get connected in our ministries and events as well. Also, I'd love for you to share this content. If this is blessed to you, I know that God wants to use you to bless other people with it. So share this podcast, if you will. Lastly, would you consider supporting this ministry? This is made possible by other people's generosity, and I'd love for you to pay it forward. Join us to reclaim the message and the movement of Jesus together. So would you consider giving to this ministry? I know that God is able to do immeasurably more through us when we come together. Thank you so much. God bless you. and Enjoy. The pursuit of pleasure actually leaves us enslaved, not free. There is a God whose love will pursue us into the darkness day after day. The ingredients of love actually carry the power to not just be a nice idea, but to actually transform our lives. goodness okay well good 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 morning thanks guys that was really awesome for me can we just give it up for Jesus is anybody excited that he is here amen I just have to tell y'all I listen I normally am like uh I'll just cry and let things out during worship but today I was like I gotta come up here so I gotta keep my (laughs) gotta keep my makeup together but y'all there is a presence of God here that is so thick that I just don't want y'all to miss it. I, I know I'm not going to, like, that's not where we're going to sit and stay, like, in this low moment. But, like, he is here. He is present. And I'm just so excited for what he's going to do in this room today. Uh, yes, through me, amen, but through, like, just you guys experiencing him, amen. So I, my name is Tiffany Godwin. I'm so, so grateful to be here and be with you guys again. Uh, I am over at U City, the church. I'm on staff there as the all-teams lead. That means I run and take over all of our volunteers and make sure we're in tip-top shape. Um, And so, but we are so happy and grateful for you guys. Mosaic has been like the biggest, I just keep saying it, and and our pastors will say it too, they have been the biggest like proponent and just so helpful for us because we're only 18 months old, y'all. So we're right down the road. Yeah. Only 18 months, but we, and we're making it through and we're finding out how, just how much more crazy we are every single day that we said yes to God in this. But let me tell you something. Y'all have some awesome leaders. I, I really do love y'all. I joke with y'all a lot, but I really do love you guys. I appreciate you, Pastor Naeem, Pastor Christian, Pastor Ashley, Mike, Sean, wherever all of you are, I love y'all. And so y'all, give it up for your leaders. We've been giving it up for everybody. I love you guys. So, hey, listen, they tell me I've only got about 30 minutes. Uh, I grew up Pentecostal, right? So I used to love or, or hope or wish that my pastor would stick to 30 minutes, right? And so, but he didn't, okay? And so now that I'm here in this space, I was like, yes, we want 30 minutes. But now that I'm here, I'm like, oh, God, 30 minutes. So we're going to pray, and then we're going to dig right in, okay? Uh, hey, Father, we just thank you so much for this morning. We thank you for who you are, and we, I just thank you for your presence being here. Uh, I know that all I really have to do is step here and just follow your your lead because you're already guiding each and every person in this room. I just ask that you would, though, let the words of my heart and the meditation of my mouth just be acceptable unto you. And would you just open the hearts and the minds of those in the room so that they would receive what you want to say to them uh, rightly. You're good. We love you. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen. Okay, so to jump into something, we're not going to like skip past what happened this past week in the world, Okay. The world was taken by storm. There was like 10 million people a part of it during the first, like, you know, six hours or something. And what happened, y'all, is we got a new social media platform. Amen. Okay. Anybody on threads? Anybody else on threads? Hands up. Hands up. Oh, wow. Not a lot of you. You better get on there and follow us. But the name of it, see, so now let me inform you so that all of you can come and join the cool club. But so Threads is a new social media platform. It is a part of the meta umbrella. So Facebook, Instagram, now Threads. It is basically Instagram's version of Twitter. So if you have thoughts like me, if you always have random thoughts, if you're always trying to talk, if you're always, if you just always have things coming through your mind that you want to get out. Threads is the spot for you, okay? And they should just hire me right now because I just like hype them up. But it's such a great spot that I've really been loving. I've really been enjoying. And it's just so fun. But the issue, like one of the issues when I got on there was like, who am I supposed to be on here? 
right? Like I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, eh, kind of on Facebook, but I'm on Instagram and I'm just like posting. I have this like persona who is still me, but then I get on threads and I'm like, who am I supposed to be here? Like, and I, I literally tweeted or tweeted, uh-oh, uh-oh threads, <laughs> threaded, so, stitched is what we're calling it. I literally stitched and I said, who am I going to be on here? Like, I don't know if I'm going to be like the like deep and intellectual and really intentional Tiff. Or if I'm going to be the cut up for a quarter tiff, because that tiff comes out every now and then too, okay? So I, I still really haven't decided, so y'all better follow me in and find out. But over there, it's just so fun, and what I love about it is that you get to come connect with people, right? So we get the opportunity to connect with people that maybe we won't meet in person, but we still get to create this bond over things that we, like shared interests or over just things that we say are random thoughts. Somebody else had the same random thought. And so we get to experience these things together on threads, okay? We get to watch shows together. We're about to be doing that, okay? I'm just hyping them up. Y'all got to join. And so we're doing, going to do all these things on threads, but the main reason why these platforms are created and social media platforms are created is to connect, right? It's to connect with people, it's to find your people, it's to find your community on the internet. And so that's great, like that's the pro. We get to meet people, right? But the con, one of the cons that can really be detrimental in our lives is, if we, uh, is that sometimes, because we get to see and share the thoughts and the opinions and the instructions and all these things from other people, that we often will run to these platforms to find those things, to find the thoughts, to find the instructions, to find the opinions, more than we run to God for those things. And so we'll be trying to figure out how do we live our life? Oh, I've got a question about what should I wear today? Or God, where should I go today? Where should I eat? Who should I talk to? How should I interact with people today? And instead of going and asking God, we decide I'm going to go hop on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook and see what somebody else has said about how I should be living my life. Now, that's the hard thing about it, right? Like, that's something to face. And what I'm not saying is we need to hop off threads and hop off Twitter and hop off Instagram and all these things because, y'all, they need us, okay? <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot going on on these platforms where they really need us. They really need some Jesus out here, okay? They really need some love and some hope. And we can be those to bring it, bring it to them. But what I am saying is that we really have to be intentional about what we're, like, allowing or who we're allowing to influence our lives, whose thoughts we're allowing to overtake our minds and how we live and how we think and what we're going to do with our life. Amen? And so I really believe this thing, and it's not just for us here at Mosaic, but I do feel it's really, really strongly here for you guys today because I felt it so strong. But I do think it's for the whole, whole generation of now. And that is, God is saying, the world is only going to get louder. The world is only going to get noisier. Opinions are only going to get more opinionated. People are only going to have more to say about things. And so you've got to be really intentional about knowing what God says, about knowing who he is, about knowing what he said, spoken over your life, about knowing who you are before you go to these other spaces or anywhere else. Not just, it's not even just on social media, just in life. At work, people are telling you how to live, right? And your family, people are telling you how to live. And so he's saying, hey, we've got to get back to being intentional about what I have spoken over your life and about what I'm telling you to do with your life, because guess what? I know best, and I want what's best for you. And so we're going to really dig into that today. I, I just wanted to go ahead and tell you all the whole point at the top of the, top of the message, but we're really going to dig into that through looking at a passage, and that passage is found in 1 Kings chapter 13. We're going to throw it all the way back to the Old Testament. So 1 Kings 13, I want everybody to just meet me there. That's everybody's favorite book of the Bible, right? Everybody? Yeah, 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 yeah. No? Okay. So 1 Kings 13, let me tell you guys what's happening here. So this, we're, we're met with a king who is named King Jeroboam, and he is in Bethel. And at this time, King Jeroboam has been like a, years before it had been prophesied to him that he was going to be the king and he was going to be able to rule 10 out of the 12 tribes of Israel. There's 12 tribes of Israel, right? And this is right after King Solomon's death. King Solomon, King David's son, we're just walking through it all. And so King Jeroboam is like, okay, he's ready. But here's what also the prophecy said. If you would follow my ways, follow my commands, and if you would stick to what I say, as in God, what I'm telling you to do, then you will have a dynasty that's as great as that one of David. But y'all know what King Jeroboam didn't do. Follow the commands of God and follow the ways of God. Instead, this man, my guy, 
decides that he's going to build his own altars in his own spaces because he doesn't want people to go maybe off to the other, t- other two tribes and go back, turn back to God. And he doesn't want them to leave his, tr- his tribe. And then he also starts appointing priests that are not Levites, which is what they were supposed to be. So he's just appointing people. Just, yeah, you, you, Oprah out here, you're a priest, you're a priest, you're a priest, right? He's just doing all this. And then he even, like, he's building shrines. He's doing all kinds of stuff, y'all. Just crazy. And so in that, God is like, all right, cool, 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 straight. I'm going to send somebody to tell you about yourself, okay? That's what I'm going to do. And so God does. He sends a man, because back in that day, he would send prophets to, to prophesy and tell people about what's, what's coming, what's going on in their lives, all these things. And so he sends a man from Judah. And this man from Judah comes, and he tells him, hey, you know what? Because you're doing all these things and you're disobeying and you're not following what God has said, this altar right here that you're standing in front of and trying to sacrifice on is actually going to be broken. There's actually going to be one from King David's line who's going to come and rule, and he's going to burn the bones of those priests that you keep priesting out here. He's going to burn their bones on this, on this uh, altar, and then you're just basically going to see your dynasty collapse, right? And so this is where we are pretty much picking up because he's, telling, he's told him this, and he's come, and he's just said all these things, so the king sticks his hand out, shrivels up, tells uh, the man, of, man from Judah, can you please pray? I need my hand back, okay? And so he prays, his hand comes back, returns, and then he's like, wait a minute, you're a man of God, I really need you to come home with me, basically. Like, I'm gonna, hey, can you come home? I'm gonna feed you, and I wanna give you a gift. Now, this is where we find out what the man of God, what, what instruction he was given from God. And he says this to the king. In verse eight, but the man of God answered the king. He said, even if you were to give me half of your possessions, I would not go with you, nor would I eat bread or drink water here. For I was commanded by the word of the Lord, you must not eat bread or drink water or return by the way you came. In verse 10, so he took another road and did not return by the way he had come to Bethel. And so we see here, I want us to really dig into who this man of God is. Like what's his character? And so what we find here, if he's able to go and tell this really like strong, bold word, he's pretty courageous. Okay, so we've already learned that. Two, in order for him to be entrusted with that, he's got to be pretty like in in right standing with God. He's righteous. He's following God's plan for his life, apparently, right? And then we can also find like he's living his life on purpose. Like a lot of us are in here doing, we're living our life on purpose. We're following the ways of God. We're doing everything that he's telling us to do. That's this man of God. He's bold. He seems like he's, listen, he just came up in there and was like, y'all are having this festival. This ain't it. And so he's, he's not this like shy, timid man. He is bold. He is strong. He is courageous. He is purposefully living. And so what I want us to do is just keep learning about him. What's the rest of his story? Because that's where we're going to find what actually does happen when instead of listening to the word of God, the instruction that he's giving you, you listen to that of someone else. So we are going to pick up in verse 11, and it's going to be up on the screen for you, but I'm going to read it here for us, and we're going to read a chunk of scripture. We're going to read a lot of scripture today, and then I'll break it down for us, all right? Sound good? Let's get it. All right, so verse 11 says, Now there was a certain old prophet living in Bethel, whose sons came and told him all that the man of God had done there that day. They also told their father what he had said to the king. Their father asked them, well, which way did he go? And his son showed him which way, which road the man of God from Judah had taken. So he said to his sons, saddle the donkey for me. And when they had saddled the donkey for him, he mounted it and he rode after the man of God. He found him sitting under an oak tree and he asked him, hey, are you the man who came, man of God who came from Judah? I am, he replied. So the prophet said to him, come home with me and eat. This man of God, the man of God said, I cannot turn back. He says this again. I cannot turn back and go with you, nor can I eat bread or drink water with you in this place. I have been told by the word of the Lord, you must not eat bread or drink water there or return by the way that you came. Then verse 18 is where it gets a little dicey. Okay. Verse 18, the prophet says, the old prophet answered, I am, I too am a prophet as you are. And an angel said to me by the word of the Lord, bring him back with you to your house so that he may eat bread and drink water. But he was lying to him. Verse 19, so the man of God returned with him and ate and drank in his house. Oh, no. Like, just, oh, no. When I read that first, the first time I was like, oh, come on, man. This is great. Like, what's happening here, y'all? 
He just was so bold and strong and courageous and just told the king, I ain't coming home with you. But then the old prophet comes up and he's like, I mean, I might as well, right? And he goes home with him. And it's like, well, wait a minute, fam. So what's happening? Why was it so easy for him to like fall here, but not necessarily here with the king? Here's what I think. The, the old prophet, the, number one, the reason they are, they're calling him an old prophet, it would seem that he's older than the man from Judah. He's older than the other prophet, right? And so maybe he's looking at him and esteeming him, putting him on this pedestal saying, hey, you're actually more wise than me. Hey, you're actually probably have more experience than me. Hey, actually, you, you probably did hear that from God more than what I've heard from him. Even though it's completely contradictory to what I heard, maybe you did hear it because I think that you are someone who I can trust right? See, the king, that was somebody he already knew was corrupt. That was somebody he already knew was like, hold up now, you, you a little evil, you cutting up, right? So he's like, of course, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to pay attention to what God has said to me. But this is what happens in our life, y'all, right? Like, we'll, it'll be real easy for us to not like go to, uh, with, with the word that somebody who we feel like is already corrupt or already evil or already has done something wrong in our eyes. We're like, I'm not doing I'm not doing that. I'm not going with you. I'm going to listen to what God has said. But as soon as someone who we are close to, someone who maybe we look up to, someone maybe we want to be like, says something, even if it's different than what God has spoken to us, even if it's different than what we've read in his word, even if it's different than what we, what we believe, we're like, well, maybe, maybe I'll try that. And God is like, well, whoa, wait a minute now. I've given you very clear instruction. He was able to repeat his instruction, the, the, the man from Judah, able to repeat his instruction twice and still, yet and still give in to go with the old prophet. And see, that's the problem here because the, the word of the Lord says in Romans 3 and 4, it says, let God be true and every human being a liar. Meaning that whatever God has spoken over your life, whether it doesn't make sense to you, whether you can't see it, whether you're like, no, no one else is saying this. Like, what, where is this coming from? Believe it. Trust it and believe it. Because he knows, I'm telling y'all, he knows the end from the beginning. The word tells us that. He's seen everything that we're going to go through. He knows us inside and out. He knows what's best for us. And so he's not just telling us things just flippantly and saying like, oh, yeah, try this. Oh, yeah, do this. No, no, no. God is intentional with our lives. And so he's speaking things to us and telling us, hey, there is a perfect plan for your life. And if you would just follow this step, I got you. You're going to see something good. You're going to see something great. Do not give it to what the society is saying, what social media is saying, what your family is saying, if it is contradictory to what I am saying. And so we must choose to lean God's way whenever somebody tries to say something different than what he has said. We must. And so the next thing we kind of see here is that, listen, the, the, the man from Judah, his obedience to the old prophet to go home with him is 100% disobedience. Oh my, everybody say disobedience. We're going to get comfortable with it. There we go. Say it one more time. I love how y'all didn't say it happily. Amen. Like we don't want to be happy about it. Okay. But really there, I think that we also live in this world where we don't want to face the moments where we were disobedient. We want to call it something else. Like, oh, I just made an oopsie. I just messed up a little bit. Oh, wow, I just colored outside the lines a little bit, Lord. But he's like, no, you were were disobedient. I told you what to do and you did something else. What's going on here? Now, this is the thing. God is not expecting us to be perfect. We are human, right? So he's, he's already laid out in the plan the moments where that's going to happen. But if it would be way better for us, if we would really try to be intentional about just sticking to the plan, his plan, sticking to his plan, listening to him and going with what he said. Because we don't want to be disobedient to what his instruction is over our lives. And like I said, that's a hard pill to swallow. It's okay, my therapist tells me to sit in it, okay? (laughs) She's just sit here, girl, just sit here. So we're just gonna sit here for a second. And we're just gonna take it in. Because I don't think we really understand like where that can lead, like where disobedience leads us. Because it's not just this, this disobedience thing, but it can really affect the rest of our lives. And we're about to see how it affected the rest of his life right here in the rest of this passage. Y'all ready to keep going? All right. So verse 20, 
I'm going to read it. Verse 20 through 24, it says, while they were sitting at the table, the word of the Lord came to the old prophet who had brought him back. He cried out to the man of God who had come from Judah. This is what the Lord says. You have defied the word of the Lord and have kept the command the Lord your God gave you. You came back and ate bread and drank water in the place where he told you not to eat or drink. Therefore, your body will not be buried in the tomb of your ancestors. 23, when the man of God had finished eating and drinking. Hold on, let's just pause. I'm sorry. Because the man of God decided he's going to get this word and then still keep eating and drinking. Like, what was the food, y'all? Steak? Like, what, what, what in the world? He's like, he just told you, like, hey, you weren't supposed to do this. He's like, well, I'm going to just finish my plate. I'm going to just get into it. I'm going to just. I mean, I don't want it to go to waste, Lord. My last meal. Okay, anyway, 23. I'm sorry. Let's get back to it. Okay. When the man of God had finished eating and drinking, the prophet who had brought him back saddled his donkey for him. And then verse 24, as he went on his way, lion met him on the road and killed him. Uh-huh. Oh, my. Y'all. Yeah. Uh-huh. I heard. Dang. Yeah, he did. A man, a lion met him on the road and killed him. And his body was left lying on the road with both the donkey and the lion standing beside it. What just happened, y'all? Like, whoa, okay. I love how y'all really caught that. Like, wait a minute, he really died? Yeah, yeah. My God did, okay. So because it's wild because this man's one act of disobedience in this moment led to his physical death. That's heavy, That's heavy. I'm telling y'all, disobedience can do a lot of stuff in your life. And so his led to his physical death. And it's something, I want y'all to say this with me too. It's it's a little little down, but I want y'all to say it. Disobedience leads to death. Come on. Disobedience Mm. leads to death. My God. Now, some of you are like, well, hold on, girl, because I haven't seen physical death. I'm I'm here. (laughs) I'm still breathing. What you talking about? And so I, I just want us to catch that, though, because Romans 6 and 23 says, for the wages of sin is death. And disobedience is a form of sin. Going against what the Lord has said over your life. And so it means that we've missed this mark. It means that we've taken, we've taken another turn. We've gone somewhere else. And we're creating now our own path. And so disobedience leads to death. And so some of you are like, again, I haven't experienced physical death. What are you talking about? What's, what's going on here? So I want you to ask yourself this question and answer it honestly, okay? Is there an area of your life where you once had peace or hope or joy or it's, and insert your own thing and now you feel like it's gone? Is there an area of your life where you're like, wait a minute, I used to have some clarity right up in this, this area. Maybe it was my finances. I used to be good here. My relationships, I used to be good here. They're so, it's so peaceful. And now you're like, well, wait a minute. Where, where'd that go? Where's that at, right? This is, now listen, I'm not talking about the, the moments where the enemy is just doing the enemy's thing, where he's attacking you and he's coming against you and he is stealing and killing and destroying, which is the only thing that he knows how to do. But I'm speaking about the the areas where we we feel it in our gut. The areas where we have not done what God has asked us to do. Those are the moments that are leading to this moment of death in our peace. Death for our hope. Death for our joy. Or like, what is happening? What's going on in this area of my life, right? This is disobedience. And it might be because you've done it out of fear. It might be because you've done it out of, you just don't understand. You've done it again because maybe you heard from someone else who you love, who you're close to, who you look up to, something different and you just wanted to try it because you just really didn't know. But God is like, hey, follow me. Follow me. Because here's the deal, y'all. Disobedience doesn't just lead to death. It takes us off the path that God has set for us. It takes us off the path. We just take a little veer off the path that he has set. Again, another hard pill to swallow. But God's way of leading us is by getting us or asking us to take obedient step after obedient step after obedient step. That's just who he is. That's just how he works. And again, it's because he knows what's best for us. And so now there's some hope, okay? Because I know y'all like, woo, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it up here, okay? 
So I feel you. I understand. Okay. I had, listen, I had to walk through this message for two weeks before y'all did. Okay. So listen, I got it, but I, there is a hope. Okay. Somebody say, give me the hope. Yes. I, now there you go. I felt some oomph in that one. Listen, if you are still here, if you're still living, if you're still breathing, then guess what? There's still a grace over your life. God is still wanting to use every single part of your life for his glory and good. Yes, even that, that season that you feel like you've been disobedient in, he's still going to and wants to and desires to use it. And he's going to show you that he's not mad at you for, to, for this moment. He's not upset with you. He's not looking at you and like scolding you. He's not that angry God at us. He loves us. And so this is just a moment of him. Listen, those whom he loves, he prunes. Pruning does not feel good. Pruning is cutting. It is pushing, pulling away things that maybe have been stuck for a long time, things that have been growing with, things, with something for a long time. And so that separation is not easy and it doesn't feel great. But those whom he loves, he prunes. And so if you're feeling yourself getting pruned, guess what? He loves you. And that's what's happening right now. He's showing you that he loves you. And so you may be feeling this thing we like to call conviction. You might be feeling a little convicted up in here, right? And that is just really God's way of showing you, hey, I, there's something going on right here in this area of your life. I just want you to know that I have a better plan for it. I have a better way for you to do this. So I just want you to turn to me in this. And now this is the thing. You might also, or not also, but you might not necessarily be feeling conviction, but you're feeling condemned. That's what we don't want. And it's not from God. So if you're starting to feel a guilt and a shame and a, and a hurt that's attached to that moment, I want you to know that that is the enemy and we rebuke it right now. Because we know that God loves us. And so he says, okay, I'm going to strip these things away from you and it's going to hurt, but it's out of love. Not, hey, you did this, you're wrong, you're bad, you're a bad person, what are you doing, who are you? No, no, no. God is like, hey, I love you, let's take this away. I love you, let's go, let's move on to another, another place. And so if you're experiencing that shame and that guilt, I'm telling you to rebuke it in your, in your own way, because that is not from God. But again, if you're convicted, then this is a day, a time, a moment where you get to you get the opportunity to come back onto the path that God has set for you. I'm not telling you I know exactly how to, like, what your, what your next step is going to be. But I do know the how. I do know the how to tell you in order to ask God, what is that next step? What do I do now? Like, God, I know I messed up here. I know I didn't listen to you here. What do I do in this moment? And so if you're feeling convicted, the instructions are simply this, y'all. One, acknowledge it. Acknowledge the area of your life where you feel like you were disobedient. Acknowledge the area where you feel like you got just a little bit off the path. And now, li listen, there's two ways to acknowledge this. You can either, either acknowledge it with you, between you and God. Y'all have a moment. You talk to him. Let him know. Hey, I know I did this. What's up? You know? Or you might be, you might be tempted, or not tempted, but you might be uh, getting urged to do the other thing, which is to confess Oh my, some of you might actually need to say the thing to another person, might actually need to tell somebody else that area where you feel like you were disobedient. Now tell somebody you trust, don't be out here finding old prophets, okay? All right, ask God, ask God, who is it? Who's this person I'm supposed to tell? But really tell somebody that you trust and I really believe that if that is the way that God is urging you or pushing you, that he's already giving you the person that you're gonna tell, that you're gonna need to tell. And so that's number one, acknowledge it with the Lord or with someone who he's told, and with the Lord or with someone he's told you to. Two, repent, hard word. These are really hard words today. I was just coming to bring it. But repent literally just means to completely change your mind, completely change direction. So that's all it is. It means, okay, I was, I was going this way, but you know what? Now that I'm not seeing that this is the right way, God has told me something different, I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna go this way. That's all repentance is. And so you are going to do the same with your thing. Be intentional about telling God, hey, I'm not going to disobey in this way. Again, I'm going to pray that I don't. 
And I ask that you would just forgive me for the moment that I did. And then the third one, everybody say three, is to ask God for your next step. Like I said, I don't know what all of our next steps is in here, but I do know that there is a next step. I do know that there is another step that you can take in order to just get right back into right standing and to just feel like, okay, here comes my peace. Because guess what, y'all? I said that disobedience leads to death, but amen, we serve a God who can bring dead things back to life. Amen. And so if you're searching for that peace, you're searching for that hope, you're searching for joy, you're searching for whatever it is you used to have, you get to take it back. Now is the time to take it back. The way you take it back, acknowledge, repent, and ask. You get to come back and ask God, like, can you please just help me here? And he's like, oh, I'm ready. I got, I'm ready. I'm locked and loaded, ready to bring this dead thing and raise it right on back up. And, it, and you will see it if you believe it. Amen? And so he's waiting with open arms, with a heart that's just bursting for, in love for you. And he still has a perfect plan for your life. The plan is still perfect because God is still in control. And so you didn't screw up your life. You didn't, God knew you were going to make these mistakes, like we said. And he's saying, hey, I, I got you. I'm going to cover the rest. I got that. I've already sent my son Jesus because I knew what was going to happen with this generation. He already knew 2,000 years ago what was going to happen today. And so he sent his son and he said, I've got love for you. I'm here for you. And I want to read this like directly from, from my notes to you because I wrote it. I felt like God was saying it specifically. He says, God loves you. His plan for you is perfect. His love for you is everlasting and his instructions for you always have a bigger purpose than you will know. He is not done with you. He is still writing your story and he's with you every single step of the way. You're still his. And now let's live like we trust him. Let's live like we believe that. Anybody ready to live like that? Amen. Amen. And so I'm going to ask you to stand and I'm going to pray. And then we're going to go into worship. And again, if, this is, if you're that one who's saying, I, I'm convicted, I really feel like this was for me. I really feel like this area of my life, I need God to show up again because I know I took a, took a, take, took a um, step to the left or to the right. I'm going to pray this over you and I just want you to really let it sink into your heart. Just really take it in and then take it with you maybe. And so this, let's pray. It says, Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace that is over our lives each and every day. I thank you for moments like these where you graciously bring us back to you. You pull us back into alignment with you and with your will for our lives. And we acknowledge those moments where we have not obeyed your words. We repent and we ask for your forgiveness. And we believe that we have been forgiven. And lastly, we thank you for giving us the next step you want us to take. We will commit to taking the obedient steps, knowing that you are right there with us and that you just keep asking us to take obedient step after obedient step as you walk with us. We love you. And Father, I wanna pray over the person who doesn't feel like they've ever gotten to come into right standing with you. The one who's feeling that tug from you today, who feels you saying, hey, I want you to have a relationship with me. I wanna have a relationship with you. I want intimacy with you. I speak life into that person. And I say right now, you know that Jesus loves you. Jesus died on the cross and he was risen again for you. And he has so much more for you in store. All you have to do is say yes to him today. Thanks for listening to this message from Mosaic Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. For more audio and video content, visit us at mosaicchurch.tv.